eBay is a really funny place to browse films. Every once in a while I come across something I just have to try for myself. And let me just read this to you. Uh, 75 to 20% transition. So when you take this outside, it'll go from 75 to 20%. That alone is amazing, but it also boasts 91 to 93% IR heat rejection, meaning that's my 35% ceramic, meaning it is better than that right there. It's also three mils thick. So we're gonna unbox this, we're gonna see what the heck is going on, and there's gotta be a catch, right? It's, it's eBay. It was 35 to $40. This is a 20 inch by five, I believe five foot roll. And I gotta say, it's actually nicely packed up. It's already got like an interesting color to it. This is uh, not typically what you see in any type of regular film. They're always gonna look kind of dark um, right out of the box. This didn't claim to be anything colorful or different, but it is ceramic, so, and I'll be damned. This stuff looks stupid clear, very light with a tinge of blue. That doesn't look bad at all. Let's check this stuff out. So I got a heat box over here, so we're gonna use that. This is a BTU meter, also known as a solar meter. So this tells you heat output. This is my heat lamp demo that I show all my customers that come in here. So each one of these slides, as you can see down here, is tinted in 20%, except for this one. This has no tint on it. So it gives you a nice overview of how much heat is coming off the bulb and you get to feel the difference between the two. So when I turn this on, it's at zero, pop the meter on, I'll give you guys a better look. So with the heat bulb on, the meter is about at 300, so when you put your hand in front of there, you can feel quite a bit of heat coming off of it. When we move over to 20% dyed, that number doesn't really change much because dyed film doesn't block out infrared heat hardly at all. So I can still feel a bunch of heat, but you still have uh, good aesthetics and glare reduction. So when we move to the carbon, that number is basically cut in half. And then you go to the ceramic and we're at 87. So you knock out about 75%. Um, so it's really like 50% drop from each one of those numbers there. So you move back to no tint, pops back up to 300. Ceramic, all the way down to 85, where you can barely feel any heat. Now what I'm going to do here so let's go back to the no tint and we are going to drop this film right in between and we're going to see what it changes to 53 what the heck <laughs> they're not kidding it actually has a substantial amount of heat reduction more so than the ceramic that's sitting on the car so like does the transition work at that point? I mean, what's the deal? So I have a tint meter right here. So we're gonna just pop this over and see what this stands at. It looks super light right now. Um, we're metering, I don't know if you're metering at 69, uh, uh, 69. So yeah, it's right within that really light 70% range, not quite set, but we still have the liner on it. So. We're, Close enough, in my opinion, where 70% is stupid light. Let's take this outside and see if it actually changes on me. I'm gonna open up this garage door and I have a white sheet of paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover up part of this and get it nice and exposed to the sunlight. So it's gonna hopefully transition and then we're gonna pop a meter over both and see, is it actually still, does it change? How dark did it get? It's actually getting darker. It's gonna be a little challenging to see but you can see right here, you got like a little bit of like a purpley difference. So I don't know how long this has to sit here. Look at that, the longer it's hanging out here, it definitely has a purpley look, but that just might be from the paper. So let's get rid of that. And it's there's no way that it's 20%, but I'm guessing give it some time. We're already down from all the way to 43%. It's still dropping. The longer, <laughs> this stuff is crazy. The longer I leave this out here, the darker it's turning. Um, and look, you can actually see my handprint right there. That's crazy. All right, all right, I'm digging it. Let's put this on my car. So it's still holding some. You can see just the uh, difference between coloring, the side that was exposed and the side that has kind of been rolled up and you could even see my handprint in there. So. 
Um, I need to get this stuff installed on the car, so I'm gonna try and install this as clean as I can. We're gonna be putting this on the driver's door, and then we're gonna drive around with it. If you guys are looking to remove your own film, uh, get yourself a one inch razor blade, um, actually a small pack, and then you're going to spray literally dish soap and, and water, just mix it up, get some soapy water, spray it on your glue, and then just go across. You go at a very sharp angle to the glass, and this is gonna dull out the razor blade about halfway through, so you're gonna wanna flip it over, or switch to another razor blade, yummy. We're gonna go ahead and install this. I got the window all clean. Now I wanna take a little bit of extra time to make sure because this is one going on my car and two, I don't have a lot of film to work with. I wanna make sure that this goes right the first time. So if you're interested in the tinting process, I actually go live here uh, multiple times a week on the channel. Full cars start to finish and I own a tinting business. Um, but if you wanna know current status of this film, feel free to ask me at any time or if you have any other tinting questions, just pop on anytime I'm live, hit that subscribe button and also give this video a thumbs up because this is probably the worst. Never roll your film like this, ever, please. Um, if you do, uh, this makes it a nightmare to install. So I have the liner facing the inside. So I need to cut it this way, meaning that this whole time the film is just gonna curl in on me like a son of a bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. One second. I managed to get this thing cut. Um, it's still curling like crazy. So I can only imagine what this stuff is gonna be like to install. Um, I managed to kind of cinch it up here. I got to shrink it. That is the last step. And then hopefully I can get this installed just so I could get my honest thoughts of it. Because if I was trying to install this stuff for a customer, I'd go absolutely crazy. Uh, so as it turns out, this stuff is uh, oriented the wrong way. So where you think you would normally shrink it would be vertically with the film, but I guess I should have checked it beforehand. So we need to shrink it this way. Hopefully we didn't damage it too much um, on the bottom because this is a slower shrinking film. So you don't have to shrink it very much, but I always like to shrink them a little bit. That gets it to form to the glass pretty smoothly. So you don't have a bunch of nasty finger spears in there. So I don't know, just a little bit on the sides, not much. All right, so I have it installed and it's kind of hard to tell that it's actually 70, but it is much lighter than all the rest of it. There's a couple uh, little imperfections down here that would drive me absolutely crazy and I want to rip it off, but I don't have another piece. So we're going to roll this halfway down. We're going to pull it out in sunlight and then we're going to see kind of what it meters at then, see if it transitions enough and uh, let's go check it out. All right, so we have it sitting here outside, window rolled halfway up, so it gets that transition going on the top, and then we get to see what it originally looks like at the bottom. Um, let's, uh, let's check it out. Unfortunately, it's not uh, super bright outside. It's overcast, but we still got UV exposure. So what I would imagine is that this is going to change a little bit more dramatically when the sun is out a little bit more, because even my... Uh, my transition glasses right here aren't doing the full craziness that they usually do. So let me grab a little piece of paper here. Let's check it out. Ready? What? Oh, dang. All right, that's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's got a little bit of a blue hue to it, but not anything that's offensive. <laughs> this looks really, really clear. And uh, this, yeah, I, I dig it. it when you, if you're trying to match this to like factory tint, the coloring is going to be a little bit off. But if you're just doing like a full car with something like this, that is, that is way cool. I mean, I guess for a couple of doors to have that transition effect. So let's see what it pops on the meter. It's 35 right now. 35. That's a, that's a big change. That legitimately is a big change. So you went all the way from. 70% to 35%. Maybe a little bit darker when it's completely clear on the glass itself, but I mean, look at that. All right. So I, 
All right, so I just kind of wanted to give a professional window tinner's final thoughts on something like this. First impressions, really. Um, I have no idea how long this stuff is going to last. Uh, it's an eBay film promising the world, so that's not exactly confidence inspiring. However, it did provide substantial heat reduction. It does actually transition. So it is doing right now what it's claiming to do, but for how long it's going to do that, I have no idea. Um, two, this doesn't match factory tint really at all with that color. So it's got a much stronger blue to it. So you're going to get um, similar shading on the front to the back. I guess not right now because it's overcast, but when the sun comes out, hopefully it'll darken up a little bit more and then it'll match the factory a little bit more on the outside. But when you look at it on the inside, it's got a pretty strong blue uh, to it. So it's not quite gonna look the same, but you know, hey, it's kind of a newer technology. It looks super cool. We're gonna leave it on the car. So if you wanna know how long this stuff lasts, uh, please check me out while I'm streaming and feel free to ask there. Um, I stream pretty much on the channel all the time. Um, I do full cars live start to finish. So feel free to ask me how it's holding up. We're gonna leave this on here for a while and probably do a follow-up video. Um, I wanna rip it off and do a new piece because there's a few little imperfections with the uh, fun we had trying to install it. But you know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Uh, did you like this video? And uh, thank you for watching. I'll check you out in the next video. Bye.